okay so in the last lecture we have studied simple rnn simple rnn model is used basically when you are working with sequential data for example text where word sequence is uh, important in order to work with the actual text okay but simple rnn suffers from the problem of long term dependencies means if we have long term dependencies simple rnn is not working efficiently it is not showing better result so we have to use long short term memory layers lstm in short okay let's try to understand this with the with the help of examples so first example is the cloud is in the blank so in blank we have to place sky that is simple one so no context information is needed over there so in such a cases simple rnn works fine but consider the second example like i grow up in the france full stop then many more sentences are there and at the last of the paragraph i am saying i speak fluent dash dash so in blank space dash dash we have to put a word so obviously there should be a french why because in the first statement of the paragraph i am saying that i grow up in france okay so in such a cases context is needed and uh, simple rnn fails in such cases because there is long term dependency in the first sentence of paragraph we are saying that i grew up in france in the last sentence of paragraph i am uh, ne i need a context of this i speak fluent french okay so simple rnn fails over here but lstm provides better result in such cases take another example the cat comma which already ate the mouse comma dash dash full so in dash dash we have to place either was or where but that is actually depending on the first part of the sentence the cat the cat we have used that's why we have to use was in the dash dash place so again we need a context over here so in such cases lstm works better so let's see what is mean by lstm unit what is included inside it how lstm layers are used in tensorflow 2.0 so let's see the unit of lstm so basically lstm unit includes four types of activities like which information we have to forgot which information we have to update which information we have to keep for uh, the next cell and last one is output of this unit okay these units are combined together to form a lstm layer okay so let's understand the lstm key set for the lstm is cell state so this cell state have ability to store the information okay but what information st should be stored what information should be removed out what information should be carried forward that is decided with the help of regulated structures called as gates so gates are useful to decide all these tasks like which information should be stored which information should be removed how to update the information and which information should be carried forward okay so let's see each gate and what is actually performed over there so first step in the lstm is to decide which information we should throw out from the cell state okay so for identifying this we are using previous state and current time step input we are performing sigmoid activation function we know that output of sigmoid activation function will be in between 0 or 1 so if it is 0 that information is na uh, not at all useful in the next stage okay so we have to remove that information if output is 1 or closer to 1 we have to place that information as it is okay for example the cat okay so we have to preserve the cat so whenever 
that previous carry information is providing cat we have to use that information as it is so output for the cat will be one but when it comes to which already ate the mouse that information is not actually needed or useful in such cases output of such sigma activation function will be zero and that information will be removed out okay and when it comes to blank space in blank space what we have to place we have to place was because we have used the cat so that information is available in the cell state so that cell state is actually present across units present inside the layers this is actually the formula for deciding which information we have to remove from the cell state now coming to the second step we have to decide what new information we are going to store in the cell state along with the previous one okay so tanh activation function along with previous state and current time stream will decide what should be the new information so all, for the new information new vector will be generated and that vector along with the sigma activation function will take a decision which information new information we have to store inside the cell state okay so tanh activation function is going to generate the new vector for new information sigma activation function uh, is useful to decide uh, how we are going to update the information in the cell state finally point wise multiplication will be done to update the information so after getting that point wise multiplication that should be added to the previous state so we have to perform addition over there so new updated information along with the cell states information is added in order to form a new information which will be forwarded uh, for which will be useful for the next state okay so this is third and finally we have to generate the output of this particular unit okay so that is again very simple so we have to state previous state current time stream perform a sigma activation function on it and now the still cell state information after applying tanh activation function we are going to perform point wise multiplication so that will be the current state output and uh, which will be provided as a input to the next unit so this is all about lstm unit so these lstms are connected with each other in the lstm layer okay so we are going to continue with the same example that we have used for simple rnn in simple rnn we have used imdb data set for identifying sentiments of movie reviews okay so we are going to use same data set so let's use that for uh, identifying sentiments with the help of lstm now okay so in the first cell we are going to perform we are going to import libraries import tensorflow stf in uh, Uh, from tensorflow dot keras dot layers, we are importing start all the layers, all the models present under tensorflow dot keras dot models, and finally we are importing the data set present inside uh, tensorflow dot keras dot data set. Okay. So after that, in the second cell, we have loaded the data with the help of load underscore data method. Okay, IMDb dot load underscore data method num words is equal to one thousand. So top one thousand words we are using for identifying the sentiments of movie review, which are used frequently. If we are talking about the review, the fifth review from the training example training data set will look like this. So there are just the numbers. label associated with it is zero means this is negative review okay so imdb data set has performed pre processing on it so imdb data set is not going to provide you a plain text 
rather it is providing a list of numbers so those numbers are actually associated with the words in the vocabulary okay so these words are representing numbers okay if we want to identify what is vocabulary associated with it then we have to use imdb dot get word index we are going to get vocabulary and we have printed that vocabulary so this is actually the vocabulary the word and the number associated with it generally it is called as index okay so if we want to decode this then we can by using with the help of uh, the dictionary okay so now we are going to perform padding so what do you mean by padding so there are multiple reviews and uh, these reviews are, are are of varying length so some of the reviews are smaller some of the uh, reviews are very uh, larger that is long reviews in such cases we have to bring all these reviews in one equal length one equal input size so for that we have to perform padding we have to change length of shorter reviews that will match with the longer reviews okay so that can be done easily with the help of padding so from keras dot pre processing we are importing sequence and max words is equal to 500 means in each review we are going to consider 500 words beyond that we are not going to consider if that uh, review is shorter then we are going to perform padding over there we are going to pad with zero and we are making sure that shorter review will have also the length of 500 okay then it is simple one sequence dot pad sequences and inside that we have to pass the data set along with the max length so we are going to apply uh, padding for trend underscore x test underscore x also so what we have studied embedding layer we have perform uh, form after that we have used three simple layers and finally we have used dense layer with one neuron that is sufficient for performing uh, sentiment analysis that is positive or negative so after training we are getting accuracy close to 77% okay and uh, validation accuracy is 60% so these are the graphs that we have received after performing sentiment analysis with simple rna okay now let's see how to build lstm model uh, inside tensor flow 2.0 so i have specified model is equal to sequential that is output of first layer will be provided as a input to the next layer so number of layers are stacked one after another okay so model is sequential one after that we have created embedding layer same as that of uh, the simple rnn we are considering thousand words unique words those will be used frequently in the review then embedding size embedding size we have to provide so that will be the vector size which is just used to represent each word okay and after that we have to specify input length is equal to max words means 500 words for from each review will be provided as a input to the lstm model okay so embedding models embedding layers job is to build the embedding vectors for the words okay so the uh, embedding vectors will be learned from the training data set itself okay we are not going to use pre trained word embeddings over here so embeddings will be learned from the input text itself after that we have specified lstm layer so this will be the first lstm layer it's uh, it is going to include 100 units and uh, return sequence is equal to true okay 
so 100 different units will be used in the lstm layer return sequence is equal to true so this particular parameter is used to distinguish the two flavors of lstm so in the first flavor we can output at each timestamp and second flavor is we can output at at the end of processing that complete review okay so return underscore sequence is equal to two parameter helps us to generate the output at each timestamp which will be provided as an input to the next layer okay so lstm next layer is again lstm with 50 units return sequence is equal to again true and at the last we are using last lstm layer with 25 units the output generated from these 25 units will be provided as an input to the last dense layer where we have included only one neuron with activation function as sigmoid we can print the summary of the model with the help of model dot summary then it is simple one we have used rms prop as a optimizer algorithm binary cross entropy as a loss function matrix is equal to accuracy and uh, we have trained our model with the help of model dot fit okay so we have used 10 epochs batch size is equal to 128 validation split is 0.2 after completion of training we are getting accuracy close to 86 percent and uh, validation accuracy is also uh, 86 percent okay so basically its output is good compared to the simple rnn after that we have plotted graphs for uh, validation and training accuracy validation and training loss so this is how we have received the graphs for the validation training accuracy and validation training graph so this is all about uh, lstm thank you for watching the video